Stocks on Buying August 2020 edition. Welcome in guys to my favorite series I do on this channel each and every month. In this video here today, we're gonna cover the three stocks that I am planning on buying in the month of August and uh, maybe considerably, okay? I wanna explain to you why I wanna buy these stocks. I'll give you my full bullish thesis. As many of you guys have seen this series before, you know how it rolls. I'm gonna give you my full bull case there, okay? But the most important part of these videos is not the actual three stocks I'm buying. In my opinion, especially if you're newer to the stock market, you've been investing for less than two years. In my opinion, the most important part of these videos is to really hear the thought process that goes behind making an investment and actually putting my money in these stocks and making investments in these stocks. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, if you don't mind, smash that thumbs up button that lets me know that you enjoy the video. Also, it helps out the channel in general. And if you're somebody that has five figures plus in the stock market or you're looking to invest five figures plus over the course of the next 12 months, go ahead and check out the first link in the description down there if you're looking to scale your portfolio out over time, okay? Without further ado, guys, let's get into this. Stock number one of three up here is a company named Nordstrom. Ticker symbol in this one is JWN, okay? And this is one I've been watching very closely as everything has transpired with the Rony Rona situation, right? We know malls closed down, a lot of things closed down, and I've just been keeping track of the stock, and I just wanted to see how kind of things have played out. I've been to several of their stores, even in a couple different states, just to see and kind of gauge, like, how is business? Like, how is business right now? Not how is business six months from now, 12 months from now, hopefully it's a lot better than today, but just like seeing what, what customer activity levels and things like that. And so this stock right now, there's $13 and some change a share. The, the entire market cap for Nordstrom right now is trading at $2 billion, just over $2 billion. This stock is pretty dang close to its 52 week low, which is crazy to think about because a lot of stocks are, are you know way off of their 52 week lows. They're way up since they hit their 52 week low. This one's pretty dang close. Like this one's 52 week low is in the 12s. And here we are with the stock in the 13s. So it's pretty dang close. And the 52 week range is anywhere from $12 to $43 for this particular one and in terms of re in history, this is just a beaten down stock, okay? I mean, you look at, you go back to November 2018, this was a $65 stock. And since that time, it has just been beaten down, beaten down, and obviously Rony Rona situation just is like a, a dog kicking it, okay? But I think Wall Street has it wrong with this stock. Let me be very clear, okay? Nordstrom, if you don't know, they have, uh, let's call them, you know, like the upper middle class, slash wealthy, they love to shop at Nordstrom, okay? And in their big stores, their department stores are usually in big malls, but not just any malls. A Nordstrom is in like an A plus mall, okay? Like the, the, the malls that are actually doing good, okay? A lot of malls aren't doing that great in this environment, haven't been for years, but the fact is there are actually some malls that still do really, really good. And those malls are actually the higher end malls, okay? Those are ones that have done really, really well. So at that side of their business, they have a Nordstrom Rack, which is more like stores and strip malls that is going more after like the middle class with that brand because at the end of the day, you can get some great brands and some great, you know, designers and things like that, but for a lot cheaper prices at Nordstrom Rack, okay? So that's a phenomenal, phenomenal business for them. Then they have their online side of the business, so actually shopping at Nordstrom.com, which they picked up a lot of customers over the past six months, and you know, especially as this Rony Rona situation took off, they picked up a lot of new customers that have never shopped at Nordstrom before. I actually just listened to a presentation they did a few weeks ago. They were talking about how many customers have just started shopping at Nordstrom.com and their websites and things like that that have never even shopped on Nordstrom. They also own Trunk Club as well, which is somewhat of a competitor to something like a Stitch Fix, but they compete in, in, in a little bit of a different style. Let's put it that way, okay? When it comes to Nordstrom, it's a company that I think has under a 10% chance of going under, okay? With the cash capital they raised and with the fact that most of their stores are all open now and those stores are actually you know de doing decent business it's not back to where it was but they're actually doing decent business or you know relatively speaking I think there's about a less let's put it this way less than a 10% chance of this company going under so you know if you're thinking is the stock going to zero you know all things are possible out there but I really don't think Nordstrom is is going under I think the, the odds of that happening are, are pretty slim okay the, the issue with Nordstrom when it comes to at least the stock price and why the stocks just continue to be kicked and kicked and beaten down is everybody likes to, at least on Wall Street, likes to just put them in the same category 
as all the other like junky department stores, okay? Like Macy's and JCPenney's and Neiman Marcus and Saks Fifth Avenue and Sears and Barney's and Dillard's and all these different brands that honestly, it just shouldn't be in Nordstrom's category. Nordstrom's playing its, just to, you know, to say JCPenney's is the same as Nordstrom or Macy's is the same as Nordstrom or Sears is the same as Nordstrom, it's just, uh, to be quite frank, it's ignorant, but it's what happens on Wall Street. They like to group stocks, and they're like, if we're going to kick all these other ones, we're kicking you as well, okay? And it's just, it's preposterous. It's no different than saying Amazon is the same thing as eBay, because gosh, I could go buy a 50-inch flat screen on Amazon, and I could do that as well on eBay, and they're both online platforms. So they're the same thing, right? No, they're not, okay? Just like Sears is not the same as Nordstrom, and JCPenney's is not the same as Nordstrom. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't be like, uh, put in the same categories. It's just ridiculous. They're different businesses that compete in different spaces and ultimately have very different management teams, visions, and things like that, okay? But the fact is, Wall Street has thrown Nordstrom stock in the trash. It is clear as day. While so many stocks have bounced way back off their March lows, Nordstrom stock is way down, and I think Wall Street has gotten it way way wrong here, okay? So when it comes to JWN, I think they're gonna get back to yearly profitability in 2021. No, we're not talking like, oh, it's gonna take them like three years to get back to profitability or four years. No, I'm talking about positive net income in 2021, and that's on a yearly basis. It's possible, okay? I'm not, I'm not gonna guarantee this, but it is possible that the company could actually be net income positive in 4Q of this year, okay, this year. Keep that in mind, but in terms of yearly profitability, I'm expecting that to be back in 2021, and some pretty nice numbers, okay? Because at the end of the day, the strong get stronger in this situation, and the weak get weaker, and the weak go under. It's no different than, if, you know, I know a lot of you guys have been hearing me talk about Cheesecake Factory stock, right? And our Cheesecake Factory, a big company that's very well run, that ultimately, you know, has had their business kind of devastated in the short term because of Roni Rona, had to force restaurants to close and things like that. But at the end of the day, Cheesecake Factory will emerge out of this actually stronger than they were before. Meanwhile, a lot of the weaker competitors that were doing small bits of business and just barely making it are going under in the scenario, and it's the exact same thing when it comes to these retail players. A lot of players have been barely making it for a long time, and a lot of those guys and gals, they're going under, okay? And the strong will get stronger, which ultimately means Nordstrom will have even less and less competitors and less and less people trying to throw crazy deals out there and sales and those sorts of things, okay? Also, this is a dividend stock, usually, okay? In my opinion, the dividends will return for the stock in the back half of 2021 or early 2022, in my personal opinion, okay? Remember, I think this company's gonna be profitable on a yearly basis in 2021, which means, you know, they'll be able to bring back the dividend. I think the company wants to make sure they're gonna get back to profitability before they bring back the dividend. I think that is smart. I think preserve cash for the rest of 2020 and just, you know, hopefully four Qs, a really good quarter there. And then, you know, as this company proves out, it's gonna be profitable again. Things are getting back on the, on the right track. Rony Rona starts to, you know, get in the rear view mirror. All of a sudden, then you can bring back the dividend and the business is back in the right place, okay? So this will be a dividend stock, in my opinion, again in the future. And keep in mind, this was a super consistent dividend paying company. They paid 37 cents a quarter for every share you held for years and years and years and years now. And this company would still be doing this to this day if it wasn't for a once in a hundred year event named Rony Rona, okay? So the fact is this company will get back to dividends in my opinion and you know, fairly nice dividends. I don't know if they'll jump right back to 37 cents a share, but 10 cents, 15 cents, I think that's definitely a very much a possibility. And then raising in maybe in future quarters and years into the future, okay? When it comes to Nordstrom stock, okay, under $25 on the stock is good value to me. Whenever I see the stock go under 25, it just represents good value to me. I'm like, hmm, okay, I gotta really think about buying some Nordstrom stock because this is a good value here, okay? Under $20 for Nordstrom stock, in my opinion, is great value. That's when it's like, oh, Okay, uh, let's buy some Nordstrom shares and, and buy pretty heavily, okay? But under 15, and well, that's where we're at here today, you know, and I've just been looking at the stock and I'm like, wow, like what am I doing? I have to, have to put money in this ASAP, including today, I think I put 10 or $15,000 in the stock across my different accounts. And in August, as long as the stock remains, you know, low price, especially if it remains under 15, I will continue 
to be a buyer Nordstrom stock and add to this position quite considerably. And keep in mind, I've been in the market for about 12 years now, and what I've always seen is rotation money, okay? And what I feel that there's gonna be a rotation money change coming soon, in my personal opinion, maybe even as early as September, October, where essentially we'll actually see money rotate out of a lot of these high-flying tech stocks that have just been doing amazing and seeing their stock prices go up and up, and a lot of funds will be forced to rotate some money to more of these retail sectors, restaurant sectors, things like that, as well as you'll definitely have some hedge funds out there looking at value and looking at it and being like, huh, do I want to buy this stock over here that's already ran, you know, 600% this year and, you know, it's a possibility it could pull back 20, 30% or do I want to buy one of these beaten down retailers, somebody like a great name, like a, obviously a Nordstrom and maybe make 100% over the next year or two as the stock gets back in the right place, the revenues start to climb again, company gets back to profitability, and all of a sudden people are like, whoa, this stock deserves to be a 25, 35, maybe even a $40 stock once again, okay? So that rotation money will come, and uh, yeah, so I definitely love Nordstrom stock, and uh, I will be adding that considerably in August as long as it is under $15 a share, okay? Stock number two of three up here is a company named Cruzy doozy, Cirrus Logic, okay? Ticker symbol C-R-U-S on this one. The stock number two or three. It's a company with a little under a $4 billion market cap. So, you know, uh, relatively smaller, but not like a teeny tiny company by any means, okay? Cirrus Logic to announce Q1 results on August 3rd. I am prepping this video and recording this video on July 31st, which means earnings are coming in a few days, okay? But we have gotten a few clues around those earnings very recently, okay? Look at Apple stock here today. Apple stock up over 10 percent here today. Why is this so important in relation to Cirrus Logic? Well, Cirrus Logic last year got 79 percent of their revenues from one company. Do you want to know what that one company was? Apple, okay? Apple, th this is this is Logic's business at the end of the day. They have a lot of different customers, but ultimately they do so much business and they have so many chips in the iPhones and different devices that Apple makes that Apple just dominates their revenue, 79%. So if Apple's business is really weak, Obviously, it's a really bad thing for Cirrus Logic, okay? And that's a risk to, to Cirrus Logic's business. Man, if Apple was to all of a sudden uh, start doing really bad numbers, oh man, that would be devastating, obviously, to Cirrus Logic. But in the great times, like, oh my gosh, Apple's quarter, they just report it. All of a sudden, now it's like a scenario where this is this is amazing, okay? This is amazing for Cirrus Logic. Look at these numbers Apple just reported yesterday. They beat revenues by over $7 billion, a ridiculous number, okay? iPhone revenues beat by over $4 billion. Why is that so important? Well, Cirrus Logic makes chips in many different Apple devices, some iPads, Macs, MacBooks, things like that, but ultimately their biggest device, their biggest money maker, or iPhones, okay? They get several dollars for every single iPhone that is sold. And so when Apple comes in with a four billion plus dollar beat on iPhone revenues, hmm, that probably bodes very, 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 very well for a company like Cirrus Logic who gets, you know, let's say 80% of their revenues from this company named Apple. So this is phenomenal, phenomenal news. Look at what analysts are expecting for the stock, okay? Analysts are expecting the companies to report $225 million of revenue for this quarter that's about to be reported in a couple of days, right? Versus a year ago, I don't know why Yahoo Finance didn't have the number. I went and researched what Cirrus Logic did a year ago. A year ago, the company did $238 million, okay? Now, keep in mind that that's basically an expectation that the company's business will decline by roughly $13 million in this current quarter, okay? But keep in mind, the guidance for this company was at 225 for the mid when the company you know, announced numbers a few months ago for their latest quarter, right? 225 was the mid. 200 to 250 is what they expected. If I had to guess, being that Apple just massively crushed numbers, I'm gonna go out there on a limb mm -hmm, and say, Cruzy Doozy is probably gonna be a lot closer to 250 when it comes to revenue, 250 mil than 200 mil, okay? Let's just put the pieces together. Okay, Apple reports great numbers. They're selling way more devices than anybody thought. They're selling way more devices than Cirrus Logic thought. Okay, 
hmm, Cirrus Logic's probably gonna beat numbers by quite a considerable margin. And so this bodes very, very well. And this is why ultimately I bought recently, I actually bought, I think it was $10,000 worth of shares here today in Cruzy Doozy, right? Right before earnings, you know, I could have said, well, let me just wait a few days and, and buy, you know, some, some more shares after earnings. But ultimately, guys, when, when we're talking about an expectation of 225 and they're probably going to come in with a number way over that, uh, uh, it's, it's probably going to end up being a situation where the stock ends up going up quite a bit after earnings, okay? I'm much more scared when it comes to the stock of the stock being $70 plus after earnings than the stock being in the $50 range after earnings. Let's just put it that way. Because like I said, I think they're going to probably crush earnings, being that Apple just crushed earnings. And if they end up crushing earnings, more than likely the stock's going to go considerably higher. Wall Street's going to wake back up to the stock and be like, whoa, 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 cruisy doozy. We need to get back on that cruisy doozy train like we were before, okay? Now, for a short-term negative thing, but I don't know how negative this really is, Apple's confirming that new iPhones won't arrive in September. So it looks like there's gonna be you know, possibility of early October for the iPhones to go on sale. Usually it's around like September 12th, somewhere around there that you can actually start getting iPhones. Sometimes September 25th, but sometime around there. So they said a few weeks later, it's gonna get pushed back. So likely early October is when we'll get the new iPhones. And remember, the iPhone's the most important device when it comes to cruisy doozy Cirrus logic, okay? So when we look at next quarter's numbers, 315 million is expected. Who knows? You know, who knows what that quarter will come in? That's going to be a that's going to be a questionable quarter. You know, maybe they come in and beat that with the guidance huge. Maybe they don't. We'll see. That's just one of those that's kind of a wild card right now because you know the fact that the iPhone's being pushed back a few weeks. But at the end of the day, Wall Street analysts have this company seeing their revenues decline seven percent plus for this year, right? Because everybody's expecting, whoa, iPhone was going to be down huge. Well, guess what? That's not happening. So what happens if a scenario happens here with Cruzy Doozy where not only does a company not shrink their business, but they actually grow their business this year, okay? That's when you're talking about stock price moves that can be huge, massive to the upside, okay? That's the type of scenarios. So we'll see what happens here with Cruzy Doozy, but you know, uh, if I had to bet one way or another, I don't think their revenues are going to decline 7.4% this year. It's probably going to be uh, a whole lot closer to break even, if not growth this year. And that's massive, okay? They're the supplier to the top eight smartphone OEMs, okay, this company is. The top eight smartphone manufacturers, they're suppliers to them, okay? Smart accessories, they're supplier to two of the top three truly wireless headset brands. As far as smart home devices, remember, these chips go into everything. It's not just smartphones so it also, also can be things like tablets smart accessories think about you know LL watches right smart watches think about things like you know headsets think about things like you know speakers like you know the Alexa speakers and those sorts of things right as well as you know almost every brand Apple Google everybody has a speaker now heck you know FB they obviously have products in the market that you know can sit on your counter and, and have a camera and voice going through them and everything all those different devices need amplifiers all those different devices need smart codecs and those sorts of things and guess who provides that Cirrus logic they're the number one player in this market okay now something huge to keep in mind here other than just you know Apple just doing a lot better than anybody expected is the company expects to expand content with new and existing customers this year fiscal 2021 so if you didn't know Cirrus Logic is already in their fiscal year 2021 and they're saying they expect to expand content with new and existing customers. This is huge. You know, it's always been thought about that the Cruzy Doozy could expand content with Apple in this iPhone generation with some new things they're trying to do, you know, maybe even specifically around voice biometrics, which it looks like that could very much well be what ends up happening. And that's huge for the company. It's one thing for volumes to be up with devices. It's another if you can basically get more money per device. Let's say you were getting $4 for each smartphone sold before, and now you get $5? You know, for a company like Cruzy Doozy, an extra dollar per device, if not an extra $2, massive. When you're talking about hundreds of millions sold in a company that doesn't have a massive market cap on it or something like that, this is huge stuff, okay? Expanding product portfolio, mobile, okay? They have flagship smart codecs. These usually go for about $1.50 to like $2.50. Audio amplifiers, ASPs of 40 cents to 75 cents. Haptic drivers, 50 cents to 75 cents. So guess what? If you're watching this video right now on an iPhone, okay? By the way, let me know in the comment section if you're watching this video on an iPhone, okay? If you're watching this video right now on an iPhone, 
guess how my voice is getting to you right now? It's happening through Cirrus Logic Semiconductor Chips. That is how the technology is getting to you right now. And when you go to talk to somebody on the phone later, do people actually talk on the phone anymore nowadays? I don't really know, okay? But if you go to talk to somebody on the phone later, guess how your voice is gonna get to them? through Cirrus Logic chips, okay? Also, when it comes to smart accessories, smart home, they have codecs for that, haptic drivers, audio amplifiers, everything across the board. When it comes to audio amplifiers, everyone wants their devices to be louder, right? Whether it's a tablet, whether it's a smartphone, everybody wants it to be louder. You wanna be able to just, you know, have a, have a smartphone that you don't have to like hold up to your ear if you have it on speakerphone because it's so dang quiet, right? We all want louder devices. You gotta have speaker protection in there. You want it really like high quality. I mean, imagine if you're watching a video or a movie or listening to music or something like that, you want it to sound as high quality as possible. You know, I mean, some of these devices, especially back in the day, sound so bad. Anybody remember like the old, old smartphones? Oh, the audio was so bad on them back in the day, right? Battery management, you know, when it comes to suppliers, you know, it's so important to have a, a such and such runtime of how long your device can last for, whether it's eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, something like that. So while you're doing all this and you want clear audio, you want loud audio, you want all those sorts of things to go through an amplifier like Cirrus Logic makes, right? You also want super low power. Now, if you want all those things, it takes innovation. It takes a lot of research and development from Cruzy Doozy, but that's great for Cruzy Doozy, although it's a big investment for them, because ultimately it's innovation. And this isn't a commoditized business. It's not like it's just a commodity business where it's like, oh, I'll swap you in and out. I'll swap this one in or something like that. At the end of the day, when you're talking about all this innovation that needs to happen, you're talking about specialized employees, specialized processes to achieve you know, things like this out there. So this is all very, very big, okay? Haptic and sensing solution. So keep in mind, anytime you, you know, feel it like a vibration comes from, especially like any type of Apple product, any, any type of newer Apple product, that's because of a haptic driver that Cirrus Logic puts in those devices, okay? So if you feel, let's say you got, a, you know, some type of, you know, device on, such as an Apple Watch or something, maybe you get a notification and you feel it on your wrist, that's actually a haptic driver in there that's doing it. It's not an actual, motor you back in the day used to be like motorized like a little motor in there spins this thing around and that's how it gives you the vibration it doesn't happen like that now it's all through like basically an amplifier but that's just used for haptic sensing so it like gives you that vibration like do do to your to your wrist or whatever or you feel that on your phone or i mean imagine playing a game and uh on your on a tablet like an ipad or something like that a game right or a racing game and you could feel like haptic feedback like how cool would that be okay all those things have to happen through haptic drivers and guess who's a massive player if not the biggest player in the world in this space cruzy doozy okay smart codecs voice processors when you're talking about voice biometrics that's the ability to essentially say you know hey cyrus let's call it okay because i don't want to send all my devices off right now uh, read me my latest email or read me my latest text message. And even though the device was locked at that time, it can go ahead and do that because it recognizes your particular voice. No different than if you pick up your phone and you point it at somebody else, it doesn't recognize their face, it won't unlock, right? But you point it at your face, it unlocks for you, right? Same exact type of thing, but with voice, voice activation. So you don't have to be by your phone and you can actually unlock it through your voice and have it do something for you, okay? Everybody wants these to be ultra low power. That's the biggest thing. Like, don't waste all our battery or otherwise, you know, uh, customers might go to another competitor because gosh, our, our products don't have good battery life or something, right? And those smart codecs and voice processors, they do everything from voice capture to voice activation, barge in, far field voice, custom software for the customers, okay? Third party ecosystems can even use these different applications. It's just a massive product category. And this is where Cirrus Logic gets the bulk of their revenues for, although the AMP business is continuing to build, build, and build, okay? Headset codecs. So, I mean, think about AirPods nowadays and all those different devices and headphones in general, right? This is something that just continues to get bigger and bigger. Voice capture, noise reduction, echo cancellation, sensing applications, hearing augmentation, all these sorts of things. It's just getting bigger and bigger. Now think about it. You know, like, like look at me right now. I'm prepping this video. I'm listening to music while I was prepping it for you guys, right? And uh, guess what? I got a pair of AirPods in. And this is just becoming a bigger and bigger thing. People having headsets of some kind, especially wireless ones, it's just getting bigger and bigger and it's just gonna to continue to get bigger and bigger over the next five to 10 years, which is a very good thing for Cruzy Doozy, okay, when it comes to all their products. Now, in terms of a track record of long-term revenue growth, this company is very well run, 
by a gentleman named Jason Rowe, done a phenomenal job growing this business. Look at where it's grown from, a $200 million a year business a decade ago, to now 1.2, almost 1.3 billion, right? Now for fiscal 18 to 19, they took a big drop off in revenue because uh, essentially, you remember back when there was a few iPhone generations that used a dongle in there, right? It was like this little dongle connector and this was in the whole like, you know, when, when Apple switched to basically a different way you could plug in devices and wasn't like the headphone jack thing. Well, Cirrus Logic actually, you know, made the main chip that was used for that dongle. So Cirrus Logic got a huge bump up in revenue from 16 to 17 because of that. Uh, unfortunately, the dongle went away in, in 19, so it hurt revenues in the short term. Company went right back to growth last year. And this year, you know, if it wasn't for Ronnie Rona, there was no question this was gonna be a very nice growth year. It might still be a nice growth year, okay? Wait to see these numbers that come out in a few days and we'll get a lot more clarity there. Balance sheet wise, this is always one of my favorite companies in the world balance sheet wise. Almost $600 million in cash, debt that is non-existent, $147 million in inventory, okay? They got another $120 million on the share repurchase program that's available. And that was as of their latest quarter they reported. Tax wise, they're always able to get a pretty low tax rate, you know, relatively speaking, 15 to 17% expected, okay? So, so many great things you're obviously seeing here with this company, okay? Let's talk about Samsung for a minute. So, for a few years, you know, Cruzy Doozy and Samsung, they kind of, their relationship kind of broke up. I'm not sure what for. I think Samsung wanted to use a cheaper supplier. I think that went really bad for Samsung and it hurt their business and they realized, uh, oh man, we should probably use Cruzy Doozy again for our voice related things, okay? And so if you look, back when the S10 came out, the S10 Plus teardown back in 2019, the relationship finally started working up again, okay? They had an audio amplifier in that device, an audio codec, a smart codec in that. They had another audio amplifier. And so ultimately, their relationship with Samsung is back up and running now and that's phenomenal news because you don't want them just to have you know all their business with Apple. Remember, Samsung's a big customer as well out there. So you know the fact that they can have some Samsung business is absolutely massive. Now when it comes to Cruzy Doozy, this is a hard company to compete with. I know you're seeing the market cap and you're like, oh, it's under a $4 billion market cap. Can't Qualcomm or or you know uh, Skyworks Solutions or you know which is another one of my investments or some of these other companies that are big big semiconductor companies that have 10 billion, 20 billion, 50 billion type market caps, right? Can't they just come in and crush a little guy like Cruzy Doozy? But the truth is, it is so hard to compete with Cruz. Okay. Why? Because Cruise actually works with customers very closely, okay? I got a picture here. It's not an actual picture of, of Cruise and Apple working together. It's like a construction picture. But that's basically the relationship. These companies work very, very closely. This isn't some plug and play like, oh, let's just get rid of the Cirrus Logic smart codec and let's just plug in somebody else. It doesn't work like that. This is very difficult stuff. You have to work very closely with the companies. It's very much a white glove service industry. And so if you're trying to compete with Cruise, it is hard because Apple would basically have to say, uh, we don't want to work with you anymore, Cruise, and we're going to start working with this other company, and they just start working with that other company. Like, that's a difficult decision. Remember, these iPhones come out every year. And if you're going to make a big switch like that on such an important thing, like this is we're talking about all the audio that goes through your device, the speech that goes through your device, it is a phone at the end of the day. Like This is all the most important stuff, arguably, of that device. To all just then just say, hey, we're not working with you. Like, what would have to happen there? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, they've done a very good job of keeping the relationship very good for the past decade. You know, it is more than likely going to continue to work out in the future as long as both the companies have the same type of visions, okay? Now, Cruzy Doozy, they have a beautiful office. They opened probably, shoot, it might be about eight years ago now, thinking about it, uh, in Austin, Texas. That's our corporate campus. That's our main headquarters there. Beautiful, beautiful building. I've always loved that building and kind of the way they did it there. They also have several other offices around the United States. They got one in Phoenix, a smaller office. Actually got one in Salt Lake. Then they got this one office. Hmm, look at this one, okay? Cirrus Logic Cupertino Office, 19419 Stevens Creek Boulevard, Suite 200, Cupertino, California. Remember I said they, they work closely with the customer. Let's go ahead and copy and paste that address in Maps and see where it is. Oh, it's right across the street from Apple's corporate campus. Wow, that just can't be a coincidence, huh? <laughs> Asia offices. 
So keep in mind, a lot of Asian players in the Chinese market that are on the come up in the basically the smartphone market, they have several offices in Asia to actually you know help assist those customers as they continue to build out in the Android space with a lot of those Chinese you know companies that are trying to compete in the smartphone market and things like that. Because not I know you know in the United States, for all you guys watching, you think like everybody just has Apple or Samsung. And if you don't have Apple and Samsung, like what the heck other brand do you have? Well, in other parts of the world, it's different. Okay, Apple's not nearly as big in China as they are in the United States. And so there are a lot of actually, you know, big company smartphone brands in China that you've probably never even heard of again, but Cirrus Logic actually supplies a lot of those different companies, okay? They also have a really big office from a company they acquired a few years ago named Wolfson, which kind of made them into an audio giant, okay? And, and that's actually in the United Kingdom. So you have offices all over the world. You know, it's a company that's a worldwide company, okay? So Cruise, when it comes to Cruisey Doozy, they're the only direct play on audio and voice chips becoming more and more important over time, okay? Remember, a lot of other companies might try to compete in this space and might try to have some audio amplifiers or have some smart codecs or things like that, but they don't, that's not their main business. They usually do have other like main businesses, like even Qualcomm, right? Which is a big competitor to Cruisey Doozy in the Android space. Qualcomm, you know, audio chips, that's like, you know, uh, it might be the fifth or 10th most important business for them. They have some, they have other businesses that are so much bigger than their audio chip business, right? And you have crews that is just focused on this stuff. So as you, when you just think about, you know, louder smartphones, when you think about voice becoming more important, when you think about you're expected to talk to all your devices and things like that in the future, right? All this stuff's gonna get, you know, get more and more important over time and including headsets, and all that bodes very well for Cruzy Doozy, which is the only direct play in the stock market on this, okay? The only direct play. So when you think about Cruzy Doozy, very bright future in my opinion, mark cap under 4 billion. I definitely, 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 definitely love that stock. I made a lot of money on the past. You know, it's been a, it's been a profit machine for me for years and years. And uh, I think it's going to be a profit machine for me for years and years to go in the future, okay? All right, guys. So those are the first two stocks. Those are like the, the definite buys in August. Stocks number three of three, okay, has three choices. Let's put it that way, okay? Three choices. And all three of these are maybes. They're like, I'm probably going to buy all three of these stocks in the month of August, but they're not like for sure. Cruzy Doozy, Nordstrom, those are for sure buys. These three are like, hmm, okay, I'm probably going to buy these three stocks, okay? And I was thinking about just putting one stock, but I was like, there's really three other stocks out there that I could potentially be buying in August, okay? The first one of the three maybes up there are Foot Locker, okay? Foot Locker, ticker symbol FL on this one. Love this company, $3 billion market cap, usually a very profitable business. I've been to many, many Foot Lockers uh, over the past month or two, and I can tell you they're almost always busy. They're almost always busy, they're almost always doing business, they're always, almost always selling shoes. In a time when you'd think like this business wouldn't be very healthy, they're actually doing pretty decent. And I think we'll start to see that as soon as this upcoming quarter's numbers that will probably get announced at some point in August, okay? I think as soon as August, we'll, we'll start to see some numbers come out of Foot Locker that are like, holy smokers, this ain't no jokers. Their business is actually decent right now when a lot of people are expecting it to just be bad right now, okay? Well, that's why you see this mark cap at $3 billion. I think this is another one of those stocks, kind of like a JWN. They'll bring back their dividend probably as early as 2021, and it's going to be a very nice dividend, and this stock will be up, up, and away again. Foot Locker's done an amazing job. Like, just continue to build that business. Another one that Wall Street's thrown out. They say, oh, it's just a mall-based retailer, not realizing the, the brand Foot Locker has built over time, the connections they have with, you know, the most important shoe companies in the world, including the most important, which is Nike, right? So Foot Locker's done an amazing job. Love that one. Absolutely love that one. And Wall Street's kind of throwing it out, and I think it's a mistake, okay? Stock number two or three that is a maybe for the month of August is Planet 13, okay? P-L-N-H-F. This is a maybe for me. So it, the stock has climbed so dang much, okay? Market cap is almost $400 million now at this point in time for, for Planet 13. You know, ultimately, I think it's going a lot higher long term than where it's at. So you should, you know, you can definitely make an argument that I should be buying the stock. And that's the only reason I'd consider, you know, you know, potentially buying more of the stock in August, even though it's up like, I think it's up 100%, if not more than 100% from where we started buying it. But at the end of the day, I imagine the stock being a $10 stock, if not a $20 stock, five, 10 years out. And so when I look at it, I'm like, two bucks, gosh, it seems really high at 281 versus where I was buying it, you know, a month or two ago. 
But then again, when I start thinking about this and I start thinking about where the long-term potential is, I'm like, hmm, $2 is, is kind of a decent deal here. And the interesting thing I've seen with Planet 13 is how well the stock has held up despite it you know, rising considerably. Let's be very frank, the stock has gone up a lot and hasn't sold off, which means the folks that are buying into the stock are having basically the same mindset as me, Let's buy in, let's hold for the next five, 10 years, and let's see what happens with this baby, okay? Because there's a high probability this company's gonna succeed in a major way. Because look at, I have, a, I have you know, that circle there. That's very important. Why? Because essentially, I took a week off from YouTube. A lot of people are like making, you know, uh, like conspiracies that I'm the only reason this stock was holding up, you know, essentially. I go away from YouTube for an entire week and the stock never sells off. During that entire week, I didn't post videos, the stock didn't sell off, which means essentially, there aren't a lot of breadcrumb chasers in that stock. The people that have been buying into the stock and pushing up the stock price are in this game for the long term. And that I absolutely love, okay? Because the last thing I want is, you know, uh, fellow investors, uh, if we can call them that, they're just getting in and out of the stock and they're like, oh, it went up 10%, I'm selling, I'm taking my profit or something like that. And you know, that's just a big, <laughs> just a big, big mistake in my personal opinion. So I love seeing the price action there, and that makes me even more confident to you know be tempted to potentially buy even more of this one in August, despite it being up a lot. Okay. And stock number three of three that is a maybe here is Berkshire Hathaway. Ticker symbol B R K, and then a B. Okay. Obviously, I want to buy the B shares, not the A shares, because the A shares are like, oh gosh, like three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars, some insane number. B shares are you know just a portion of the A shares. $195 for those. Anytime Berkshire is under $500 billion, in my opinion, it's almost like stealing money. Um, so that one's very much a probability I will buy that one. I just like that one more than I like like an index fund. I think it will outperform the stock market over the next decade, even though it underperformed the market in the last decade. I think this next decade, 2020 through 2030, I think it will actually outperform the stock market. So that's the other maybe there. So hope you guys enjoyed this as always. My favorite series to do each and every month. I'm happy I did it. It's a lot of work to put these videos together, the amount of slides and things. So uh, smash me a thumbs up if you don't mind that definitely helps out the channel lets me know you guys enjoyed the video and also if you're looking to scale your portfolio seriously check out the first link in the description get on a call with us from the team and uh, we can definitely help you out kind of lead you in the right direction there thank you for watching and have a great day